Hey, great day and welcome back to the podcast. And so this is an epic celebration. We are in season two of this podcast. And so I'm super excited to introduce season two. We are going to be talking about how can you be more highly qualified to get the life, the business, and the career that you desire. And so what you will notice is that some episodes may have some homework activities. Um, Some of them will feel like we're being Wi-Fi BFFs. And I'm going to really talk to you about how you can show up as the best version of yourself. You may also hear me talk about the words lesson and podcast episode interchangeably, primarily because I see this season two more as a podcast course that will walk you through a journey, but I'm really excited for season two. I hope that you are as well. So let's go ahead and get into today's podcast episode. Hey, my name is Dr. TK, and on this podcast show, we will uncover abundant tools to help you become the CEO of your business and your life. I am a mom and wife who merged my knowledge as a clinical psychologist and professor for over 20 years into building a multi six figure mental health business and seven figure digital product business, serving others and doing what I love. Now, I believe that you can make a wildly abundant living unapologetically while also dreaming big, enjoying life and making a huge impact in your community. This is the Therapist Deserve Abundance Podcast. Now, forewarning, this one is going to be a lot longer. Um, I want you to sit down, or if you're driving, just tap in. Uh, Maybe grab something to drink, not if you're driving, because we are about to go deep. All right, so let's talk about when God or whoever you worship, the universe, Um, but I believe in God. So what if God says no, but it simply may mean not right now. And this particular episode is dedicated to all of my ladies who have no children over 30, or maybe you had your first child earlier on and you want to have another one, but really, really, this is a special message to any woman who is let's just say professional in your career or you are just over 30 and you really want to bear a child, okay? So let's take it back. What happens when you want something so bad, but it is not manifesting? Now, most people would give up. Some people may even take it up on yourself to take it out on yourself, start stating limiting beliefs and so much more, okay? So I have done one live as it relates to complications during my pregnancy. Um, I did not speak about any complications whatsoever. The only people who knew about it during my pregnancy with my only son, um, because I have a stepson too, but my only biological son, um, is when I went live when I was nine months pregnant. I remember it was Valentine's Day and my husband and I were about to go out to eat. And I said, you know what? Something is calling me and pulling me to go do a Facebook live at that time. Because Instagram, I don't even think, live one popping like that. And so I went Facebook live and all of a sudden I start getting a lot of DMs, not just from women, but also from men, giving them an understanding of different processes that takes place when a woman cannot physically get pregnant or bear a child, hold a child um, full term and all the emotions that may come up with it. And so After the one live, um, while I was nine months pregnant during that time, I did share an abbreviated version of, you know, the story. And then I also have shared, which I'll link in the show notes, a video series. But if you want to check it out on the public podcast, just go to Dr. TK and start at episode number 78. I did a six part series, um, just giving a little bit more information specifically around manifestation to break down what happened during the processes of desiring a child, but not as deep as I'm going to go now, okay? So up until now, what I've chosen to do is keep, of course, a lot of the details to myself in terms of the things that I was processing even before I got pregnant, long before I got pregnant. And I wanna share with you a lot of the mindset shifts that compounded over time that I believe played a huge role in me getting pregnant beyond the physical realm, my body, right? And so also why now, just to be fully transparent, me being a business coach 
and just a person. Sometimes when you get one-on-one with people, you don't really know what people are going through, especially when you meet them in a professional um, you know, environment like myself at our events through my different various programs over the last couple of years. And it has just blown my mind of how many women are actually experiencing fertility, right? Um, I get DMs when people find that podcast series, when someone hears my story and they pretty much share, I'm going through my own level of my own process. And what I've been um, told is that, you know, for some, it is not happening and the it is pregnancy or pregnancy to the term of a birth of a child, child being able to take a breath and live, right? So for some, it's not happening with and or without medical intervention, which means that some people sought out help and they're still not able to bear a child. And so of course it hurts my soul, especially if I know them, because again, all we see is people on social media promoting a business, right? So I hear all of these stories and specifically these women telling me that these things are happening and what baffles me is when you also, you know, are scrolling maybe on social media or on YouTube and you hear people, potentially men, saying things like, you know, women should have started earlier in their prime, man, get the fuck out of here, right? That's my thought. Um, I hear some people talk about how easy it is to give birth and have a child, but then I'm like, well, that's not very sensitive to those who may have chose to wait or just have had complications for various reasons maybe even unknown to them until they started getting serious about their health and maybe even asking specific questions because the doctor doesn't look for something that they're not supposed to be looking for, right? So I personally just see way too many black women also experiencing pregnancy loss, whether that is um, miscarriage, whether that is having a child and the child not being able to live, right? And then because of where I actually grew up, I had a fear for years, decades of me seeing black parents or single black moms lose their sons to community violence or simply just being at the wrong place at the wrong time. And honestly, that made me scared as fuck to have a boy. That's why I skedaddled out of Compton as soon as I had my son. Now we got two boys. I'm not raising my two boys here, right? But the bottom line is I realized that Women need an outlet and I'm here to at least start the taboo conversation with you because I find that whether it is pride, shame, don't know how to bring it up, don't know who else is going through at least some degree of what I'm experiencing, it will leave people suffering in silence and or isolation. Of course, probably with their partner, their God and things like that, but there's way more people that are going through it than we know, right? So as I move into sharing a little bit more deeper into my story, I want you, if anything resonates with you um, throughout this particular episode, I want you to get into my DM and let me know how it resonates with you if you want, but also share this episode with any woman or man who is with a woman who is dealing with any of this to process it, right? So I'm gonna go all the way back to 25 years old. So at 25 years old, I had just moved up from Southern California, Compton to the Bay Area. Um, I was living in a area called uh, Point Richmond, which is Richmond, just like on the top of a hill. And I realized during my first couple of months in grad school, it was in my doctoral program, that clock started. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about, that clock in terms of I wanna have a baby. At the time I was with my ex, if you wanna hear more about what happened with that, you can go listen to the previous episode. Um, but my clock started and he was like, you know, you always say that, that you like dogs, why don't you get a dog? Hence the birth of um, me getting a dog from the pound. She was a year and a half years old. She's deceased now, but her name was September. She was a mix of something they really didn't know because she was dropped off at the pound. And so we had her for about, or I had her for about 16, 17 years. And so um, I got her when I was in my first year of grad school. Okay. Now, despite shit being rocked throughout my marriage, because it just didn't happen clearly at the end from that last previous episode, it had been going on for years. Right. And so because, or not because, but even though those things were happening in my relationship, then turned into, you know, now ex-marriage. 
I still never got pregnant. And I just thought that that was weird. I mean, I'm glad, you know what I'm saying? But it's just like weird that you can be with somebody in totality for 10 years and never, ever get pregnant. So I was like, hmm. And you know, you don't start thinking about those things until you want to have a child. Because before then, it was just like, man, school, 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 work, you know? So during a particular phase, I, this was like later on in the relationship, years in, I think I was actually done with my doctorate program or maybe right before, can't remember. But I went to the fertility doctor and I remember them doing a lot of invasive tests on me and they didn't find anything like quote unquote wrong, right? So the other person in my relationship did not go. And that should have been a big ass sign for me to know that maybe we were not on the same frequency in terms of what we wanted for our future at that particular time. It doesn't mean that he did not want that, right? Now, clearly that situation wrapped up years later, but that did not stop the yearning that I felt to have a child, to go through a pregnancy, to get pregnant, right? So here's the thing. If you've heard that series, you can I, I'll take you through slowly the manifestation pieces, but that's not what we're talking about today. Right now, I want to pivot this conversation and I want to talk to you about when the shit hit the fan and when it took a turn, because this is the stuff that people don't talk about, at least out loud. So here I am, 29 years old, popping, right? Just finished my doctorate degree at my internship in LA County. I turned 30 in September, walked across the stage in October, went back up to the Bay for my graduation, got my papers, feeling good most of the time, right? Um, And then the market crashed. Now, truth be told, the market had crashed the year before. I graduated in 2009, but because I didn't own a home, I didn't understand the repercussions of the market crashing until I could not find a job. Nobody did not want to hire me with a doctorate degree on my paper because they assumed that I would automatically want a certain amount. And I was just looking for my postdoc hours. So because I didn't have a job, I could no longer, we couldn't pay our rent because the rent of where we stayed at in LA was not cheap. And because of that, I no longer had medical insurance because my internship was paying for my medical insurance. They did like a six month thing, but I couldn't even pay the $700 a month for that. I couldn't get the internship hours. Therefore, I couldn't get a license. Therefore, even other positions that I could have been good for, I cannot get. So what the fuck do you do? So because I know myself well enough, despite me feeling numb inside with all of these things going on, marriage, money, housing, just so doctor degree, uh, student loans about to kick back in, right? I just felt like my world was literally crumbling apart but I also know how to be super resilient. So I decided full blown after sitting in a full depression with like in a dark house, like it's sunny in Southern California. I had the shades closed all the time. Wasn't going to the gym, wasn't doing nothing. I wasn't eating, eating. You know how some people like eat when they're sad. I actually was not eating because I was sad. And so I sat in that for about two months and I got tired of it, which meant that I learned how to sit in my shit. And I would encourage you to do the same if you're going through a rocky time versus trying to avoid it. You you may actually be prolonging the journey to the other side because simply you're trying to avoid it, right? So I sat in it for approximately two months, but then I realized, you know what? If I need to move back to the Bay because I know that there are plenty of jobs up there that could get me in because I went to school up there, then I'll leave. So I found a position from the old high school I used to work at. And they paid at that time, like 60K a year. I got to go in there and build my old program. And if you know anything about me, you know, I love quality assurance. I love building things from scratch. It is so fun. It's like a launch, right? So I moved up there and I said, the only way I'm moving back down to Southern California is if I can go work at my old job, LA County Department of Mental Health. And the reason I said that was because I knew that from having my internship there, I would have my benefits taken care of. I knew the starting salary. I knew how to kind of wiggle my way in and what to put on my resume, you know, but they had to have openings for where I wanted to work. And I really wanted to work with juveniles. So I had to wait. So by the 10th month, I received a notice because I was on the wait list. And by the 11th month, I was gone. Okay. So I came back living in Compton. And like I stated in the previous episode, I was living with my mom during that period of a transition because I did not want to move back, get an apartment and then not be able to save up for a home. So during that phase is when the marriage wrapped, okay? Um, But keep in mind the buildup at this time. 
the market is still crashing despite me wanting to buy a home, which also means it's very difficult to, uh, sh- uh, what is it? So- show your social proof, like, you know, show your work. It's hard to do that when the banks are being very, very strict because I get it of people who took out too much money, you know, for the last decade or so. Um, but nevertheless, as the market continued to crash, the mark, uh, the, the marriage crashed, we end up buying the home. And then we had to do some paperwork for me to remove that person off the home. And that happened. And then I moved into this house. Now the house was about 2000 square feet, three bedroom, two and a half bath, two car garage sitting on a 6,000 square foot lot. Cool, but a little bit too big for me when I'm by myself. And I just sat there on the floor with no couches saying, this house is big as fuck. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do with all this? Now, my mom had asked, like, cause she knew I wanted a child, right? So she was like, what are you going to do with the other bedroom? Like, I know that you're going to potentially make one of those bedrooms your office, but what are you going to do with the other one? And I said, well, I have a bed in storage. So I'm going to put my bed in that second bedroom more as a guest bed. And I'm going to buy a new bed and a new bed and when I have a child, I'll rearrange stuff. Right. So I just had in my mind that one day that room would be filled. Okay. So after that, I proceeded to go through three years of agony. And these are the things that came up during my shedding, harvesting, whatever you want to call it. I realized the reason why it was hitting so heavy and I did dive into my work. I'm not going to lie is that I was processing three losses at the same time, a marriage, the idea of a child, and also outgrowing the old version of me because I became someone else. I tapped into the newer version of me clearly as I decided who I wanted to become in this new chapter in my life. Now, during this season, I doubted that it was meant for me to be a mom. I would say things even when I was like talking to, you know, guys or whatever. And they would be like, man, why would you say something like that? But it was when I was in my funk, you know, I knew that I was wifey material, but sometimes, you know, based off, based off this dating pool, cause I did not like dating. Um, I just felt like I'm over 30 It's highly competitive because now we're talking about, I'm not starting from scratch. I'm starting off with bringing in six figures. And for some that is intimidating. That's a whole nother podcast episode within itself. I got those kind of stories for days. So ladies, I got that one coming. Let me know in the DMs on Instagram. If you would like me to go through that, like shit, dating is hard with a degree. You know what I'm saying? And so I doubted myself um, of, was it meant for me to be a mom? And so what I chose to do again, after sitting in that and not liking how that felt, I told myself, let me focus on what I do have control over and let me speak what I want. And during that period, I would just say it and not ruminate over it, meaning I've already placed it in God's hands. It's done. And that's something you want to pay attention to. If you're constantly ruminating over the how, 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 you're not actually letting him in to do his job, right? So the recap in this process is year one, In terms of the next version of me, I tapped into just by scrolling on Facebook. I started playing lingerie arena football. Some of y'all have heard me talk about that before. At 30, I was having so much fun. I found myself. I had fun. I grew some new friendships. I focused on my health. Your girl looked good. She was snatched. Like, I wish you could see my face right now. Like, I was snatched. Like, (laughs) photo shoots all the time. Like, I couldn't stop myself, right? I was on myself. But guess what? I had never been that way before. It was suppressed. Year two, that's when I started really getting out there and quote unquote dating. Did not like it, but I was like, the only way I'm gonna know if I'm gonna be a wife is if I date, I guess. Can't expect the man to just, you know, drop on my doorstep. Now, outside of that, I was clearly diving into making more money, more money, more money. I was teaching at three schools. I was working, milking the system, working overtime at different jails, the adult jail, the juvenile hall, um, the juvenile camp. I was milking it, right? And I wasn't even sleepy. (laughs) And then I also grew my solo practice into a multi six figure group practice, all while hold down these jobs. But I mean, who wants to go home to an empty house? And on top of that, that's when I really tapped into my adulthood traveling, going to Essence Fest, going to cruises, just living my best life, 
Okay. Like when they say sell your royal oats, that's my soil royal oats. It's like live it up, go shopping, travel, have fun. Right. And then year three of that processing season, I bloomed into a businesswoman, meaning I knew that business was where I wanted to be beyond having a job. My confidence was at an all time 10, not cocky, confident. Now, please note in that previous season of my life, your girl confidence was like at a five or six. It was very rare that I was at a 10 also because what was around me was not complimentary um, at all. It was just like, we were just living, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't feel like someone saw the value in me and they did not speak that to me. Right. So my confidence was at a 10. When I did start dating, I made it clear that people are in the friend zone, including my current husband. It was so funny. <laughs> he, he said when I when we were like dating or like talking, I guess, at first. Um, and I was, you know, treating him like a homeboy. Like, <laughs> so he was like, excuse my language, y'all, but he was like, dang, you treated me like a nigga, right? <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, I did grow up in a household or a family full of guys. And during this season, I did seek out I don't know how to date. Please let me know these little games that these men about to be playing because I don't have time, right? And a lot of my cousins are either my age or older than me, but you know, they definitely saw it. They were royal oats. That's all I'm gonna say. So they knew the games, whether these were professional men or not, okay? And so because they picked me up on game, it doesn't mean that I wouldn't trust someone. I would just take my time because I also believe, hence my first book that I ever um, wrote was on foundations, healthy and mature conversations within relationships is that I don't believe that people should get into a relationship and then you earn their trust. That is asshole backwards. Instead, it should be you already trust them and you have good communication skills and then you decide to take that next step. So during that third year, while I was dating, I told myself almost every day, I'm wife material, right? I'm mom material. And I didn't think about the how, I didn't think about the when, right? But I was just straight up with telling God what I wanted, okay? So here's your summary that I want you to take from this if you haven't already taken away some giggles or just some um, nuggets, right? Is if you want me to break down the manifestation process of having my son despite diagnoses, um, you definitely want to go to the show notes and check out if you're a video person, because it's a little bit more comical because you're, you're seeing me act it out. Um, I'm doing a podcast though, while I'm like a talking head video, I'm, you know, sitting in front of the camera, but I'm walking you through the process. And then the same version is on the audio podcast, but the video just gives you a little bit more graphics. And so if you want to check those out, I will link those in the show notes, the video playlist. If you want to check out the audio podcast series, just write down number 78 And then go up like 78, 79. It's a six part series. Okay. So go and check that out. Also, I just want to let you know that, you know, in order to birth, maybe even position ourselves to get pregnant, we have to take our health seriously. So I, for example, chose to focus on my health, get in shape get a trainer. I started acting like I was already pregnant, meaning what are the things and vitamins that I need to do and or consume to position myself to get pregnant, right? Like act as if. And then of course I tapped into spirituality, which is broken down in that series. I end up saying yes to the process of getting the surgery, then yes again to getting the second unexpected surgery. And I feel like everything that happened happened on time and for a reason, because I also believe it led me to the right surgeon, which is broken down in that series. All right. So what is your takeaway? I believe that what, when God tells you no, it doesn't mean that you need to take it as no forever. If that's the case, you are very much being a black or white thinker. And I'm asking you to give yourself permission to live in some gray area. Not everything needs to be planned out to my Virgos or personality type A, right? Because I'm a Virgo. (laughs) Like you got to learn how to live in the flexibility, okay? Um, You also will never get more than you can handle, even though I know it's tough. It's tough to make yourself sit in your stuff, right? But when I reflect back, I had to handle multiple losses back to back to back at a time and I wasn't ready, but I still figured it out. And when I decided to sit up and say, I'm ready for the fight because I know there are only great things on the other side, God always comes through every time, but maybe he's ready 
for you to say that you're ready for the fight, right? So get into my DM on Instagram at Dr. TK Psych. Let me know what stood out for you. Um, Share this with any women who you think needs to hear this. And again, if you want to check out that playlist on YouTube, check the show notes. If you want the audio version, go to my public podcast um, and go to number 78. I appreciate you. And to the next one, you have an abundant day. Bye. Fire me up. You just finished another epic episode of the Therapist Deserve Abundance Podcast. Now, I know what you're thinking. That flew by way too fast. So if you want more, please head down to the show notes for additional abundant resources. And if you're looking for a new tribe of abundant therapists, just like yourself to connect with, connect with me on Instagram at Dr. TK Psych. Until the next episode, live abundantly.